Hi, my name is Marsha, I'm the Coding Blonde, and today I want to talk about girls in tech. There are so many inspirational examples around me and I really wanted to share their stories with you. So the first thing that I asked them was, how did they get into tech? I fell into coding by accident. I used to be a technology reporter for CNBC.com and the LA Times where I covered a lot of really cool tech stories. And then I was approached by a tech startup founder. I was working there for a little bit, but I didn't really speak the language of everyone in the startup. They were you know, coding backend developers and I was on a different side of the team. So I decided to leave and really empower myself to speak the language of tech that I've been covering for so long. And I started my blog called techsesh.co and took it upon myself to learn how to code and empower other women to get into this business that they may or may not have known about already. I'm actually studying media and information, which is kind of similar to media science. And this one time, my university offered a course on the basics of HTML and CSS, and I just thought, yeah, let's do it, why not? This course actually really got me, like, I was so fascinated about how something I just created is now available for the whole world. So I taught the advanced parts of HTML, CSS, and also JavaScript um, to myself later. And when I felt more comfortable about it, I applied for a job as a working student in the field of CRM, where I hard-coded actually all the newsletters and automation mails. What got me into tech is Neopet.com. What I did on, on Neopet.com is mostly um, designing graphics for my guild, my profile, my shop on the website. That's what got me into coding. My graphics got more and more popular on the website, so that ended up with me creating a website on freewebs.com. I don't know if you've heard of it. So I created a complete HTML CSS website, so it was a static one. Yeah, I was offering my graphics to the community there. I remember when I was 12, I did um, a video game. That's really awesome. So it really created like good memories of IT for me. I think that's a real game changer. Like I fell in love with the problem-solving nature of computer science. I was first exposed to computer science when I was in high school. I took a course, and then later when I was in college, and I just loved, you know, solving problems and understanding systems. And it's always felt more like fun than work for me. And so that just totally captured my 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 heart, I guess. And I've um, been in love with tech since. I first got into coding in high school where I was able to take Java and Visual Basic courses. From here, I grew to enjoy coding and found that I'd like to be a computer science major in college. So how I got into programming was I started off at a mobile software development company, helping them run a mobile conference. And the only thing that I could not do was build the app for the conference. So that is what motivated me to get into it. I got into coding because I went to university to study math, actually, and then at some point, about two months in, I realized that math was too hard. Um, so I started like trying different classes around and I got into a web design class and I absolutely loved it because it had that aspect of math that I loved the most, which was kind of like the rigidity of it. <laughs> Um, as boring as that sounds. And then I just continued taking other computer science classes and I ended up majoring in computer science at university. The answer is I learned to code when I was in school, so it was much more theoretical for me at the time. So very focused on like reading textbooks, taking notes in class, writing Sueto code on tests, that kind of stuff. That's when I read one of my favorite books, which is Data Structures and Problem Solving Using Java by Weiss. And yeah, it was like very theoretical. That's how I first learned to code. And I was late to the game, so I did not graduate with a computer science degree and you know took all these courses much later in my college career I was very focused on the theoretical part and it was only when I first started working as a software engineer that I really got to practice like actually coding and building websites and apps etc and I'd say it was then the combination of the theoretical and the practical that like I really had an exponential growth in my um, learning of computer science so 
In terms of resources, I try to read blogs um, and follow, I subscribe to some new newsletters that just help keep me up to date with what's going on. For example, I follow JavaScript Weekly and React Week Weekly, which are two great newsletters. They just send out like a summary of new frameworks that have come out, news, cool conferences that are happening in the JavaScript world. And in general, like for me, there's two ways that I really continue to learn more. One is my job requires it, right? So I'm like, I have to build new things and new types of technology. So that means that I have to research how to work with those technologies. And then the second way is myself, I try and, you know, pick up side projects that challenge myself by working with new technologies. For example, I just recently built an app using React Native. I had never worked with that before, so it was a great learning experience. Whichever one of those two it is that's forcing me to learn new things, the general way I approach it is I like to um, draw upon that early learning I had, which is combine theoretical with practical. So I'll try and read the documentation or find a book on Scala, for example, and like do that theoretical reading and then combine that with building small apps and practicing whatever I'm reading. And I find that the two together is a great way to like learn and continue to grow. I went to school and that is where I learned how to code. And currently I use a lot of Pluralsight and then also Treehouse. I started to learn how to code through the website W3Schools, but when I knew I wanted to go deeper into web development, I just ordered a bunch of books. And I actually must admit that I still read those books sometimes, because the thing about books with me is that I actually always just read the chapters that seem interesting to me at that moment, or that I need for some project. So it appears that even a year later, I still look into these books and read chapters again, or different chapters. I didn't read yet. Um, and to stay updated, I read a lot of blogs and tech articles. I learned how to code at New York University and also I took a very, very good uh, programming course at Boston University this summer that I decided to major in computer science. And I think all of the basics I covered there and then I did some courses at Code Academy here and there just to kind of understand how everything works, but I think the bulk of my coding experience was at university. Another way that I keep on top of my coding is that I am the code club leader for my local school. So I teach pre-teens how to code through Scratch. It's a platform for learning how to code for kids. Uh, so I kind of keep fresh. And then they also do a lot of, oh my god, they do SketchUp, I think, and they do processing. So, which are two kind of visual languages. And it's a lot of fun. So I already talked about how I learned coding. I learned it on Neopet and on with my IT teacher in high school. What resources I use, I don't really have time to do more than what university gives me. So right now I mostly do my school assignment and work on my blog obviously, which takes so much time. I think it has a good impact on women in tech, so that's why I'm doing it. When I first started coding, I was really lost. I didn't know where to start but with a little help with Google there are so many resources out there that will teach you how to code boot camp so if you're a little intimidated it's totally fine but really do the research do the homework and see what you want to do and you'll find tons and tons of information and you can pick it up yourself I was one of the only women in my course and I actually have a joke about it I say the one of the only reasons I got into computer science is because I hate standing in line for the women's bathroom and uh, I think one of the biggest revelations was that the, um, I, I think people talk about sexism in the industry, but I don't think it's very overt. And um, I think the way that it's communicated the best is through an XKCD comic um, that says, it has a guy who gets a problem wrong and it says, you're stupid. And then a comic where a woman gets a problem wrong and it says, women are stupid. And I have, God, have I felt the effects of that on my life. What I learned about myself is that I don't give up easily. And I think I genuinely like hard work or working a lot and in the industry you have to kind of stay up to date with what's going on to make sure that your skills are always relevant. I always thought that I'm quite a tomboy, like I'd rather go outside play ball than watch makeup tutorials or go shopping. But when I started in tech, I realized that I appear pretty girly to other people in this industry. It's just that sometimes I couldn't really relate to hobbies or in free time activities of my colleague. <laughs> For example, there was this one time one of my colleagues told me that he went to a wedding party on the weekend and then he 
edit that it totally took place in the online game World of Warcraft. And this is something so unimaginable to me, like I started laughing because I didn't believe it at first, but yeah, this actually happened quite a lot. But I also learned that people in tech are just so open-minded and I love how the desire to make this world a better place actually connects people. And for example, when I was working in marketing, it was all about beating the competitor. And with programmers, this is just something different. Like, programmers and people in tech actually support each other even though they work in different companies and they also like to share their knowledge. And this is something that really inspired and impresses me. So I think my biggest revelation when starting and actually working as a software engineer was really just the importance of learning how to learn and how to problem solve at a higher level. So I started to focus less on solving specific problems and more so on learning general problem solving techniques that could help me anywhere and iterating on those. And I'd say that was definitely my biggest revelation, just the importance of that. I think tech is a very difficult field because everyone can have very different knowledge because you can learn everything by yourself and some people are good with that and some are not so don't compare yourself to others because for sure there will be people that are better than you because they learn it all by themselves. It will come with experience and you should be aware of that. At the beginning you will be just okay but with experience, with internships, with your first job you would just keep getting better. And what I find challenging also is that you always have to keep learning. You can't ever stop and breathe, I feel like. You always have to read to get yourself to know the latest news in the industry because otherwise you will be behind and it, it might be hard to get back on track after. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you got inspired by these amazing girls. Subscribe to my channel not to miss out on the next part of this video which will be about stereotypes in the industry and to follow Laura, Jessica, Brandy, Michaela, Julia, Marie and Olga. You can find all the links to their profiles and their blogs in the description. Of course leave a comment, tell me what you found the most inspirational and if you'd like to share your story please do so in the comments or if you'd like to be in one of these videos please reach out to me again in the comments or send me an email or an Instagram message. I would love to hear your story and share it with the world. Bye!